Thank you for bringing new life to me, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I worship you and I praise you. I magnify your name this morning. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. We worship you and we praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We praise your name, Jesus. We worship you. We glorify you, O oh God. You are awesome today, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. You may be seated. Welcome to all of you, but in particular, welcome to those of you that this is either your first time or maybe second or third time to be with us. We are so pleased and honored that you have taken time to be with us and to worship with us. But even more important than our honor, we are so glad that you're here to honor the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And his name is Jesus. There is no other God but him. All others are imposters. They are either demons trying to have an upgrade, or they are humans seeking what is not theirs. But Jesus, he's the real deal. He is the God who, as he reveals in Scripture, is the Alpha and the Omega. That simply means he's the A and the Z. He's the beginning, he's the ending, he's the first, he's the last. Before him, there was no God. After him, there will be no God. And currently, there is no God but him. Not only is he God, but he is our Savior. Because in case you weren't aware of it, we are a broken people. All you have to do is pick up the newspaper and read a few pages and you find how broken humanity is. All you have to do is be honest and look inside of your own heart. Monitor your own thoughts in just a single day. And you know this is not the way we were meant to be. But the good news is, is this God who has always been and who will always be, this God not only claims to be the only God, He says, I am the only Savior. Beside me there is none other. Now the good news about that is, well, let me put the bad news first. The bad news is, is if you don't want to be saved by Jesus, you aren't going to be saved. When you only got one Savior, you're either going to be saved by that Savior or you're not going to be saved. The good news is, is that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That's Him coming in the form of a human, Jesus. That He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him, whoever, whoever believeth in Him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send forth His Son to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. That's the good news. I have good news for you today. So if you want to find another God, I got bad news for you. You ain't going to find one. They're all imposters. They're all knockoffs. And they'll break the first time you need them. I may wave a hand at me and witness to some of that. We served some of those gods before. And the first time you put any weight on them, snap! They couldn't handle it. But nobody can do you like Jesus. He is the awesome God. He has more power than you can even imagine. All power in heaven and in earth is given unto him. Praise God. So I have good news for you this morning that if, if you want to be saved, you can be. And uh, I'm very happy to have everybody here. It is good to be home. General Conference was a good conference. But as with conferences, they are tiring. Uh, late nights, early mornings, and... Um, not so good food, not the food. Well, see, I have really good food where I live. Some of you might have enjoyed General Conference because you might enjoy eating in nicer restaurants. See, the problem is, is even the nicer restaurants can't compete with the food that I eat. I have a lady, now you had your turn with the microphone. 
I have a lady in my house that I say, mm, you know how to cook. And she says, well, I like to eat. So she cooks good food. And so I'm glad to be home. So my body doesn't really like that food. So, you know, you can fill in the blanks on all of that. So not enough sleep, too much stuff going on, up too early. One morning we dragged Vincent up at 6.45 in the morning to go to a breakfast. He spent the whole breakfast with his head laying on the table. <laughs> but on the way back to the hotel, I said, well, Vince, let's go back and take a nap. It's about quarter to nine. And he says, I can't go to sleep. I've already been woke up. Well, you sure could have fooled me by the snores that started coming out of that bed that he couldn't sleep. He must have been tired because he went back to sleep for a good two hours. I didn't sleep very well, but he did. Anyway, so conference was good. As Dad has already mentioned to you, we are uh, honored and looking forward to having our general superintendent, Brother David K. Bernard, with us. Uh, Friday evening, everybody, please come out and uh, be here and enjoy a time. This, both in his sermon Friday night and in the class Saturday. If you want to take the class, you need to see me. Um, and, and the 125 is the cost for the certificate class. You do receive a certificate from Urshan Graduate School, um, and we'll, send, we'll give one check to the school. Um, but fr what I've basically done is asked him to deal with, when he became general superintendent, the United Pentecostal Church was at a bit of a crossroads. Those of you that have been around here, you already know this. There were a lot that were wanting to change what we believed. And uh, Brother Bernard stepped to the podium upon being elected general superintendent and basically ratified all of his previous writings, which are quite voluminous, and uh, said, this is where we are and this is what we believe. And in carrying that out, he began to articulate that we needed to understand ourselves in terms of apostolic identity, apostolic unity, and apostolic revival. That sounds good to me, but I want to know how that plays out when you drill it down into Scripture. And so as I listened to him talk about this, I thought, let's give him an opportunity to drill it down into Scripture. He's perfectly capable of doing that, and you will see uh, by God's grace that he will do so. And so the format is, is that Friday night at that sectional rally, which we'd been asked to host prior to that time, I've asked him to preach it. Everybody know there's a difference between preaching and teaching. Preaching has passion. Preaching has a different kind of anointing. And preaching is exhortation. It's not as much proven, a whole lot more declaring. And so uh, Friday night he will be preaching to us. Make yourself available to that. It's an opportunity. Don't take it for granted. And then Saturday, if you're able to make it, um, then you can have him teach it from 10 till 6. All of you that are in my discipleship class, yes, we will have discipleship class following that. Somebody else will host him or take care of him. I will be with you teaching. And uh, looking forward to rejoining with you as well. Now, unlike my father, I can't say I missed you all. I was too busy to miss you all. But I am looking forward to spending time in classes with you. So uh, don't hold that against me. So, uh, and then, of course, Sunday morning, as already mentioned, he's going to be with us preaching in our morning service. Invite a friend. Use it as an excuse to reach out to somebody and say, Hey, you want to come here? The, the leader of our organization, why don't you come with me to church? And uh, we're looking forward to that. He has meetings the next day, that, so he has to leave that afternoon, but he will be with us in the morning service. And uh, we're looking forward to that. Two weeks from this past Friday is a ladies' meeting, and the only reason I mention it to you now is because you need to start going through your closets. Because on that ladies' meeting, you are going to have a clothing swap, meaning you bring the clothes that are in good shape but you don't want or don't fit, Boy, you all are stiff this morning. Is everybody awake? Maybe, maybe, I, maybe, I need to, maybe I need to roll the thermostat back down. I gave you all heat this morning. It's at 71, by the way. All of you want to say, ah, oh, this is the weather I want. This is what you had with the air conditioning. To, it's 71. Just telling you. All right, come on now. Brother Ray, give me a smile. Somebody better give me a smile or I'm going to start getting ornery. You all know what happens? Oh, there we go. Thank you, Sister Mary. You give me a smile. She doesn't want me to get ornery. Two weeks from this past Friday, 
He has a ladies' meeting clothing swap. Bring the clothes that you don't want anymore, and you'll uh, look through other ladies and maybe pick up some treasures that they don't want anymore. And uh, whatever's left, my wife is going to take to Goodwill, and Lil will go and buy it, as she said on Wednesday night. I listened to her while I was out of town. I was working on something else. Uh, I don't know how that works. In church, I wouldn't get away with that, listening and doing something else. But somehow in the hotel room, I was able to do that. So uh, anyway, that's what I did. I listened to her and worked on something else at the same time. So she likes Goodwill from what I hear on Wednesday night. So anything you all don't use, Art, lock up the bank. She's going to Goodwill. Praise God. We're glad to have you in the house of the Lord. I turn your attention to the Gospel of John, chapter number 7. Gospel of John, chapter number 7. Oh, also, we have a first tonight. We have a pirate preaching tonight. Have you ever been to a church where a pirate preached? Well, we have a pirate preaching tonight. If you haven't met him, he's not Brother Noel. He hasn't come back. Major Mike has not returned. But his good buddy, General Moss, has returned. If you don't know, my father-in-law and my mother-in-law, we're pleased to have them visiting and my father-in-law is trying to, I'm telling you, Mom, you better put a chain on him. First, he got his comb over gone. Now he's working on his eyes, so he's going, to have a nice, he's going to have a nice pair of glasses instead of two Coke bottles in front of his eyes. You better put a chain on him. He's going to start looking pretty good or something here. But he's had cataract surgery, and uh, that one eye is still very sensitive to the light. So uh, as you can see, he's wearing a patch, so hence the pirate reference. Amen. John chapter 7, verse 37, on the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare, rivers of living water will flow from his heart. When he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. Now what I want you to see very carefully, beyond the descriptions of belief, beyond the descriptions of being thirsty and coming to drink, and beyond the descriptions of rivers of living water, I want everyone to recognize the statement in John chapter 7. The Spirit would be given to everyone believing in Him. Within Christianity, almost every denomination and church would agree with some form of a statement that the Spirit is with us. Some may even go so far as to say that the Spirit is in us. But I'm going to ask you a simple question that this morning's sermon is meant to answer. How is the Spirit given? Many Christians would answer, well, we simply have it. But I want you to notice that this passage of Scripture tells us clearly that there is an occasion, a time, and a circumstance where the Spirit has not been given, even when God is present. And there is a change of that status because it is to be given to everyone believing in Him. So I return again to the question, if the statement is true, 
And obviously I'm taking the Scriptures at their word that they are true. That the Spirit is to be given to everyone who believes in God. Everyone who believes in Jesus Christ. Everyone who, as he put it, comes and asks for a drink. Everyone who comes and says, I believe in you and I want this drink. How is the Spirit given? It's amazing to me, and I'm very gentle and I'm very kind. The strongest voice you're ever going to hear is the voice that you hear from behind this pulpit. When I am with you in person, I am gentle in speech. I am not out to degrade you, I'm not out to debase you, and I'm not out to embarrass you. I'm simply there to share the Word of God. But it is amazing to me how many people, when I talk to them, and I ask them, have you received the Holy Spirit? Just simply the fulfillment of what Jesus and the Gospel here has said, that if you believe, the Spirit will be given to you. I've asked them, have you received the Holy Spirit? And, and invariably, if they are a Christian, they will say, yes, I've received the Holy Spirit. And then I say, how do you know? How do you know? And there is a great diversity and confusion of answers I receive. Well, I can feel it. I feel a lot of things, but I want something more substantial than that. Well, I've been baptized. That's good if you've been baptized in the only saving name of Jesus Christ. That's awesome. And by the way, this morning, if you haven't been baptized in the saving name of Jesus Christ... Let me tell you what Peter said. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It is in the name of Jesus that demons tremble. And it is in the name of Jesus that sins are forgiven. Because he's the only Savior. That's why the angel was insistent. Call that baby's name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Well, I, I, I got it at baptism. Or some will actually have a moment of silence where, well, I don't know, but I'm sure I have it. You see, the reason that I'm concerned about asking this question is because if the Word of God promises something, I want it. If the Word of God tells me that something's going to happen, I want it. If God says I can have joy unspeakable and full of glory, guess what I want? Joy unspeakable and full of glory. If God says that I can have love, peace, joy in my life, I want love, joy, and peace. If God says that I can be His son or His daughter, guess what I want? I want to be His son or His daughter. I want the promises of the Word of God. Because the promises of God are yea and amen. So I want these promises to be fulfilled. And it sure seems to me in John chapter 7 that we have both from the mouth of Jesus and then the writer of the gospel under the inspiration of the Spirit an absolute promise. If we believe, we will be given the Spirit. How do I know? How is the Spirit given? How is the Spirit given? Now we know from the ending statement that I've already referenced that the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into His glory. And so, tracking that forward, if you would turn your attention to the end of the Gospel of Luke, I would like to draw your attention to Jesus entering His glory. This means that the Holy Spirit had not yet been given because John 7 tells us that until He'd entered His glory, the Spirit was not going to be given. So the apostles had not yet received it. Jerusalem had not yet received it. Samaria had not yet received it. Judea had not yet received it. Let alone all of us Gentiles had not yet received it. We're told in Luke chapter 24, verse 35, after Jesus had appeared to two disciples on the road to Emmaus, then the two from Emmaus told their story 
of how Jesus had appeared to them as they were walking along the road and how they had recognized him as he was breaking the bread. And just as they were telling about it, Jesus himself was suddenly standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. But the whole group was startled and frightened, thinking they were seeing a ghost. Why are you frightened, he asked. Why are your hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands. Look at my feet. You can see that it's really me. Touch me and make sure that I am not a ghost, because ghosts don't have bodies as you see that I do. As he spoke, he showed them his hands and his feet. Still they stood there in disbelief, filled with joy and wonder. There's a whole sermon in that, isn't there? Stood there in disbelief, still filled with joy and wonder. You can have joy and wonder and still have trouble with disbelief. Thank you, Jesus. Then he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he ate it as they watched. Then he said, when I was with you, when I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said, Yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations beginning at Jerusalem. What is that message? It is this. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You are witnesses of all these things. Verse 49. And now... Everybody see that? And now, I will send the Holy Spirit. Just as my Father promised. But, stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Okay. Everybody agree? At this point, they still don't have the Holy Spirit. At this point, He's not yet entered his glory. At this point, it's still a promise. We've got it in John 7. He says, everyone who believes on me will be given the Holy Spirit. Here Jesus says, I'm about to. In fact, he uses the word now. Now, I'm about. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. I'm going to fulfill the promise that I've given to you. But you've got to go and wait in the city, in Jerusalem. Until that Holy Spirit comes. Until it has been given to you and fills you with power from heaven. Those are his last words according to the Gospel of Luke because verse 50, then Jesus led them to Bethany, lifting up his hands to heaven. He blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. So they worshipped him, then returned to Jerusalem, and filled with great joy, they spent all their time at the temple praising God. So these disciples who've heard Jesus say that everyone who believes will be given the Holy Spirit, these disciples who have walked with him and have stood and watched him ascend into his glory, having just heard him say that I'm about to send that Holy Spirit to you, but go and wait in the city until it comes to you. What do you think they did? They went to Jerusalem. And you can read in Acts chapter 1, that they went to Jerusalem, they went to a room, and they stayed there. They transacted some business. They voted in a new apostle. The women were included. And there they were. Holy Ghost hasn't come yet. Because Jesus hadn't ascended into his glory. But everyone who believes will receive, will be given the Holy Spirit. Now let me, before I turn your attention to my final text, how is the Spirit given? Because this morning I'm not here to talk to you about whether you have a relationship with God. Obviously, the apostles had a relationship with God. They walked with Jesus for three and a half years. I'm not here this morning to talk to you about whether you love God. Because obviously, the disciples love Jesus. I'm not here this morning taking away anything of your experience with God to this date. You would not be here if you didn't love God. You would not be here if you did not have a heart towards God. You would not be here. you got better things to do on Sunday morning. For one thing, get over your hangover from Saturday night. you got 
better things to do. So my assumption is, is that everybody that's sitting here, you already do have a relationship with God. You already do know God. But here's the question. If Jesus has made a promise to you, and he did in John chapter 7, and he reiterates it in Luke chapter 24, that everyone who believes on him will be given the Holy Spirit. How's it given? Now, up to, up to now, everything within the Scriptures, you go and you study them, all the Gospels end with Jesus ascending into the clouds. That's the end of the story. That's when He ascends into His glory. That's what John chapter 7 told us, that we, we, we don't have the Spirit yet. It hasn't been given to us yet because He's not yet returned into His glory. The manifestation, the incarnation, has not yet gone away so that He could come as the Comforter. When you fast forward in the New Testament to all of Paul's letters and you fast forward to all of the epistles written by James and Peter and other people, every one of them is assuming these people have received the Holy Spirit. You read the letters and you hear that these are believers who have been filled by the power of the Spirit. So that doesn't tell us how it happens because it's already happened. And the Gospels doesn't tell us how it happens because it hasn't happened yet. So where do we find out how the Spirit is given. We find it in the story about what happened when the disciples went to Jerusalem and waited there. Guess what? God was smart. He included that story. There's a lot of stories about God's interaction with humanity that He hasn't included. He, 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 he knows, we're, I mean, we hardly read what we got now. Hello? If he'd given us 3,000 more pages, how much more do you think we would read? I mean, come on now. Let's be honest about it. So, so God was careful. He gave us the, what we needed. He didn't give us everything. He didn't give us all the story, but he gave us the essentials. Well, in those essentials, he includes that the apostles are indeed obedient to the command of Jesus to go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father, to wait for the giving of the Spirit. And they do that, and they go to Jerusalem, and they wait there. And, and if you do the math, it's approximately seven to ten days they wait there in an upper room. And then in Acts chapter 2, here's what we're told happens. Now, I'm not going to give you any commentary, I'm just going to read it to you. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers, oops, I fibbed. I got a comment. All the what? Oh, that's those people that he says, if you believe, you get the Holy Ghost given to you. Pretty cool. All the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of a mighty windstorm. It filled all the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled. Oops. Is it happening? Kind of looks like it. Everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. So God said, everyone who believes is going to be given the Holy Spirit. So if anybody's ever told you that the gift of the Holy Spirit is only for certain people, they lied. Now, give them the benefit of the doubt that they were missing some information. And pray for them. But they fibbed. Everyone who believes will be given the Holy Spirit. There's another passage of Scripture in which Jesus says, It is our good pleasure to give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him. If you ask for it, you can have it. But see, it's not just you can have it. If you believe, it will be given. This isn't just a, a matter of, and yes, you still have choice. But your choice is in your believing. If you really believe the gospel, you will be given the Holy Spirit. But the question this morning before us is, how is the Holy Spirit given? Acts chapter 2 is where it was first given. That's where it was first given. So what happened? Well, first of all, they were believing. Second of all, they were obedient. And third, when the Spirit filled them, when it was given to them, it took over their tongue and their lips. And they began to speak 
in other languages, not because they knew those languages, not because they were capable of speaking those languages, but because they began to speak as the Spirit gave them this ability. So how is the Spirit given? It's given in a really weird way. It's given when you and God reach the place that you want Him as badly as He wants you. When you want Him as badly as He wants you. The Spirit that many of you, now to our first time guests, you're about to feel the Spirit of God because I'm almost done and when I finish, I'm going to turn loose that you pray. And when you pray, the Spirit of God is going to touch you. You say, how do you know he's going to do that? Because he's promised in his word to do it. He says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there will I be in the midst of them. I got two or three here that are believing in his name. He's going to be in the midst of us. You have a choice whether you embrace that. You have a choice whether you're freaked out by it. You have a choice whether you run from it. But you don't have a choice whether the Spirit's going to descend into this congregation in just a moment. You have no choice over that. You only have a choice of how you react to it. Because there are two or three, more than two or three believers, who have gathered together in His name, and He is in the midst of us. But some of you have been feeling God. You hungry yet? Are you ready to stamp your foot and say, enough already, God, I want you? Has it reached a point where you want him as badly as he wants you? Have you reached a point where there's no more caveats? There's no more parenthetical phrases? There's no more conditional clauses? There's no more negotiations with Him. There's just a flat out God, whatever it takes. I want you. I want your spirit. I believe in you. When you hit that moment, let me tell you how the spirit is given. God will not just touch you. He will envelop you from the soles of your feet to the top of your head. He will envelop you in His Spirit. Many people have mistaken the touch and the love and the mercy of God as He touches us for the receiving, the giving of the Spirit. But God does not just want to be with you. Jesus said to His disciples in John, He says, I have been with you, but in that day, once I've ascended to my glory, once I've returned back to my glory, once I've sent the Comforter back to you in that day, I will not simply be with you, I will be in you. In you. There is a difference between God with us. Oh, I like when God's with us. I am so glad that God has been with me all my life. You need to thank God right now that God has been with you so that you're sitting in a pew here today. So that God has drawn you to the house of God today. Thank you, God, for being with us. But I'm here this morning to tell you that God has more than simply being with you. God wants to be inside of you. God wants to take up residence in you. Not where He's just walking with you, but He's living in you. And it's a promise. Anyone who believes, it will be given. But how? Well, when that Spirit descends this morning, it doesn't have to take 30 minutes. It don't have to take a half an hour 45 minutes or an hour. When that Spirit descends, if you find yourself in a place of believing, and by the way, believing will lead you to a repentant heart. But I'm going to, before I end this sermon, give you an opportunity to tell God you're sorry for your sins. I'm going to give you an opportunity. You can start even right now to tell God 
that I don't want to stay the sinner that I am. I don't want to stay the broken individual that I am. Jesus, not only forgive me, but change me. Jesus, not only take away the cost of the payment of what is wrong in my life, but God, I want to stop acting that way. I want to stop talking that way. I want to stop being that way. Lord, forgive me. Give me godly sorrow that worketh repentance not to be repented of. Oh God, I want to be changed. Forgive me of my sins. Transform me. Make me a new creature in you. Old things passed away and all things become new. Oh God, forgive me. In that place of repentance, as the Spirit descends and you feel Him, it may not be the first time that you have felt Him. But as He descends and He begins to touch you, as He begins to surround you and envelop you from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head, what's going to happen is is your mouth is going to stop feeling funny. How do you know, preacher? Well, because I've been given the Holy Spirit. I've experienced it. And it's weird. Maybe you haven't run into a Pentecostal preacher that speaks quite so bluntly. I'm not here to sell you. That this is the coolest thing. It, it is cool, but it, it's weird. It's unnerving. Because part of what's going to happen is, is you're going to feel the love of God responding to your repentance. The repentance that you're doing in your heart right now. You're going to feel God surrounding you. You're already feeling Him. He's moving in. You're feeling the love of God that's surrounding you. And, 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 and you're expecting Him to condemn you and instead He's loving you. All the wrong that you've done. All of the nastiness that has happened. Sometimes because of your own choice and sometimes because of other people's choice. And He moves in and instead of that holy God rejecting you. Instead of that holy God meaning, being mean and, 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 and shunning you. Instead you feel His warm embrace. You feel His love. He's faithful and He's just, the Scriptures say, to forgive us of all of our sins. When we confess our faults to Him, He forgives us and so you feel that and, and, and it's going to be natural that you're going to want to say thank you Jesus it's going to be natural that you're going to want to say oh I love you Lord it's going to be natural right now because I'm still talking you're probably not going to yell it out but if you do yell it out you won't be out of order but in just a few moments I'm going to get out of the way you're going to begin to raise your hands to Him and thank Him for His feeling of, of His presence and of His love and of His care. And when that happens, when you begin to talk to Him, I'm telling you what's going to happen is you're going to feel your tongue and you're going to feel your lips. They're going to get funny feeling. You're trying to speak English, but they're going to be trying to say something else. When that moment comes, hear this preacher's voice. That is the promise being fulfilled. You don't have to argue with me. You don't have to do anything. All you need to do is at that moment when you feel that, how am I going to know that's happening to you? I'm not going to touch you this morning. Now, I know there's sometimes that preachers say we got to lay hands. I'm telling you right now this morning, nobody's going to touch you this morning. Nobody's going to lay a hand on you this morning. But when you feel that come, I want you to ask yourself a simple question. How did I know that was going to happen? And and at that moment, you have a critical choice to make because God who has been with you, evidently with you because you would not be here today if it were not for Him drawing you. That God who has been with you is asking you, will you let me give you my Spirit just as I did to the apostles on the day of Pentecost and just as I've been giving my Spirit, pouring it out upon all flesh for over 2,000 years, will you let me have your tongue and your lips speak in a language that you don't have the ability to speak. But the Spirit that I'm giving you, He gives you that ability. See, it's important this morning for somebody here today to understand that yes, this church 
Yes, this pulpit. Yes, the people who love you and the people who teach and preach to you. We are voice pieces of God. But you need to understand something. We do not produce the Holy Spirit. We do not give the Holy Spirit. The Scriptures say it is the Father. It is God Himself born into humanity. It is Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He gives His Spirit. And this morning, He's about to offer that Spirit to you. It is not going to happen just because you feel goosebumps. It is not going to happen just because it should happen. It's not going to happen just because of baptism. The Holy Ghost falls because the Spirit is poured out by God. And He's doing it the same today as He did it then. You will speak in a language you do not understand. How is that Spirit given to those who believe? God moves from being with you. To being in you. But He gives you the permission to tell Him yes or tell Him no. You don't have a yes or no about whether you're going to feel His presence. You already feel His presence. And as soon as I back up from this pulpit, the Spirit is going to fall in this place. This congregation is going to stand to its feet and lift its hands and begin to worship God. And when that happens, the Spirit's going to fall. You don't have a choice over whether you're going to feel that Spirit. Every one of our guests, don't freak out. Don't go someplace. Don't, don't run. Just, just take your time. Stand there. Just feel it. You don't need to bolt. But what you do have choice over is when that Spirit touches you. And when a heart of belief cries out to God in repentance and says, Oh God, I want to be changed. Oh God, I want to be different. Oh God, I've tried so hard to make myself right with You and I keep failing over and over and over again. Oh God, forgive me. Oh God, transform me. Oh God, make me something new. And you feel that presence of God not reject you, not fly away from you, not shun you, but envelop you. And you begin in your own voice and in your own way. To cry out to Him. To speak to Him. To, to express your thanksgiving to Him. Then you have a choice. Because I promise you with not a single hand upon your shoulder. No one laying their hand upon your forehead. The Spirit of God is going to fall on some people here today. And you're going to begin to speak in other tongues. And you're going to have to give Him permission. Because you don't know how to speak in other tongues. You don't have the ability to speak in other tongues. In fact, it's kind of weird to speak in other tongues because you don't even know what you're saying and you don't have the ability to do it. But it is in that moment of utter surrender. It is in that moment of knowing that you have no capacity to do this that you can know with absolute clarity that the God who loved you enough today to bring you to this place loves you enough not just to be with you, but to be in you. Would this congregation stand and would you lift your hands right now? Would you lift your hands right now across this congregation? If you've not received the Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, would you cry out to Him and say, Oh God, forgive me. Would you cry out to Him right now and say, Oh God, I want to be forgiven. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Church, I'm not banning you from praying with anybody, but today the Spirit is speaking to somebody that needs this to be evident with no intervention. The Spirit is speaking to somebody today that needs this to happen without anybody touching them. So that they know that this is a divine, sovereign act of God. Come on, church. Lift your voices to Him. Hallelujah. 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 When you finish repenting, dear saint, when you finish saying, God, I'm sorry. When you finish saying, God, I want to be a new creature. I want to be new. Make me new. Begin to tell Him that you love Him. Begin to lift your voice to Him and say, I love you, God. I praise you for loving me. I thank you for loving me. And I promise you, your tongue's going to get thick. Your lips are going to get funny feeling. You're going to have trouble speaking the English. And I beg you at that moment, let God take control. Let God take control. Let the language come. Because it's a promise to you. You can be given His Spirit right here, right now, today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Cry out to Him, church. Come on. Cry out to Him. We don't have to come to the altar today. It's coming to us. Right in the pew. Right where you're at. Cry out to Him. Hallelujah. 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 Let a spirit of crying out come. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. 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 Don't focus on our worship, dear saint. Focus on the God who's touching you right now. I worship you and I praise you, O oh God. I glorify your name. We worship you and we praise you. We glorify you, O oh God, for you are great and greatly to be praised. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. I cry out to you, Lord. I worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, church. Walk with me in this. Come on, walk with me in this. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All across this congregation, God is evidencing Himself to people. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to the King of Kings. Glory to the King of Kings. Glory to the King of Kings. Jesus, evidence yourself now. It's your choice. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let your spirit fall, Lord. Let your spirit fall, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's not just your mind. You're not making this up. What you feel is not conjured up by us. It is Almighty God touching you right now. It is the God of all glory wanting to come from being with you to moving inside of you. Come on. Come on. Let Him take over your tongue and your lips. Surrender yourself to Him. Come on. Surrender yourself to Him. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I worship you and I praise you, O oh God. I praise your name. I praise your name. I praise your name. Hallelujah. It'll sound like baby talk. It'll sound like gibberish. Let it come anyway. Come on. Let it come anyway. God wants to be in you. Come on. Let it come anyway. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 God, I praise your name. God, I worship you. God, I magnify you, O God. Hallelujah. 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 Here he comes. Here he comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here he comes. Do you want him? Here he comes. Lift your hands. Lift your voices. Come on. Here he comes. Hallelujah. I told you nobody was going to touch you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nobody's going to touch you. But here he comes. Like a roaring wind into the room. Here he comes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Here he comes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Here he is, here he is, here he is. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I worship you, Jesus. 
I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. Here he is, here he is, here he is. Do you want him? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Here he is. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. God, I praise your name. God, I praise your name. I magnify you. I glorify you. I exalt your name, Lord. I exalt your name, O oh God. Hallelujah! 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 Glory to your name. Hallelujah. 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 He's here. He's here. Hallelujah. 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 God, I worship. God, I praise your name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He's not going to force you. He's not going to force you. But you know He loves you. Hallelujah. You know He's not rejected you today. He's calling out to you. He's reaching for you right now. Do you want Him as badly as He wants you? Are you willing to lay down any of the hang-ups? Any of the reservations? Are you willing to throw your hands in the air and say, Jesus, fill me. Give me your Spirit. I believe you. God, I believe you, I believe you, I believe you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. The moment He gives you His Spirit, it doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter if you're in church or in your car or in your home or on the job. It's the moment when you want it as bad as He wants to be there. When you're willing to give Him control of your tongue and your lips as His Spirit touches you. It can happen now, but it can happen tonight. It can happen tomorrow. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's here. Do you want Him? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 Hey, church, don't forget, two Sundays ago, Richard received the Holy Ghost. But the first time he felt the Spirit that he finally surrendered to was months before. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There are people here today that have felt God in a way they have never felt Him before. Be patient with them. Remember the gap. Stand in the gap, the distance. 
between unbelief and belief. Hallelujah. God has been here this morning. Hallelujah. God has been here this morning. Hallelujah. God has been here this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's working in the hearts and the minds of those who need His Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more time. Would you lift your hands and praise Him? Would you lift your hands and your voices to Him and praise Him? Jesus, I worship You. God, I praise You and I magnify You. Right here, right now, Jesus. In Jesus' name. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, we praise you and magnify your name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You are awesome, O oh God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 By the way, those of you that have received His Spirit, I don't find Scripture that tells me that God leaves when you fail. I find Scripture that says, I will be with you always, even unto the end of the earth. I find I will never leave you nor forsake you. So even in the midst of your sin, in the midst of your brokenness, in the midst of your failing, God has not left you. So if you want to turn it around, the only thing you've got to do is turn your attention back to the God who has never left you. All you need to do is turn your focus back to the God who has always loved you. All you've got to do is turn your feet back to the God who has continued to woo you. Hallelujah. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. Brush of angels' wings. I see glory on all of our faces. The Lord's been here. Hallelujah. Praise God. To our guests, thank you for being here. Be sure and come back. We have Sunday evening service. You're welcome to join us. Wednesday nights is education night. And we'll be back here next Sunday morning. Different preacher, same God. Different preacher, 
Same Spirit of God. Different preacher, same opportunity to be filled with the Holy Ghost. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.